So, it's been a while, but I'm back, and it's time for my updated thumbnail tutorial. For this, you'll need Celltop's NPC mod so that you have added skin support and pose presets that aren't in the original mod. Also, I highly suggest you watch the thumbnail tutorial made by Uye after this one, and check out his graphics pack where I got some of the assets I use such as my skies. If you enjoy this video, like and subscribe since we're coming on 400 subscribers, and if I don't reach it by the end of July, you will find me in your walls. Hopefully you learned something new, let's get straight into it. So what we want to do, and there's a reason that I that you need to have this specific NPC mod as opposed to the default one, is if you go to the second page and you go to custom NPCs tools, you click one, two, and three. So what you want to do is well slash time set 10,000. This is my personal favorite time of day. The sun is up there. So you want to make sure your NPC kind of faces this general direction. So you right click the ground with the axe. Um, and I have a bunch of poses preset, but I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use the ones that will come with the mod, which are down here. And I like to use running pose one. Um, so what you want to do, firstly, change, click texture and change it to player and type your IGN. But because if you see, it has these black bits because my skin is a slim arm skin and that's not exactly very slim. I'm going to go to entity and change it to NPC Alex Arms. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the AI page, movement. I want to rotate it 90 degrees, but I'm going to do a bit more so the sun's on sort of an angle on my face. I might rotate myself even more. I don't like having the sun straight. I like having two sides of the player illuminated. Actually, I've just had a thought that I think would look really nice for this thumbnail. Now, this is actually a good tip, is if you want to copy an NPC after you've realized it's not in the right place or you want to do something else with it, go to the axe, right click and click save. Um, it's going to pile up a good amount. And again, keep in mind the sun's in this direction. So wherever I'm facing, I want to make sure that I'm also there. So I'm going to make a bridge going this way. I'm going to put the cell top clone that we just had there. And I'm actually going to change this. So again, same thing. There are different poses. There should be some sneaking poses like this. Uh, it'll bug out. Just change your name. Thumbnails are very trial and error. You will get thumbnails you don't like that much. And you'll just have to remake it or do bits from again. But as you can see, we're basically back where I started and everything's good. So what I want to do, I want to get some blue armor. So I'm going to open this website. The link will be in the description below. I'm going to click the he leather helmet. I'm going to click this. I'm going to make this a nice dark blue. I'm going to scroll down and click a minify command. I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to paste the command into Minecraft. And you can do the same thing to all these pieces of armor. So once you've got all your armor pieces, what I want, what you do is you want to enchant it. So just ho hold over the helmet and slash enchant your IGN and then unbreaking one. You can enchant the rest. I'm not going to, but just put this on your player. So that there, that there. I might test it with iron armor as well. It just depends what you think would look best. Is that? I think it does blend in too much. I'm going to put iron armor on. There you go. And I'm going to give myself a diamond sword. Now, as you can see, that is our pose pretty much set up. So what we go, what we want to go do, go to options, video video settings and shaders and now firstly on these side bits once you click a shader i'm going to go to complementary shaders the link to complementary shaders and the config that i use for them will be in the description uh, so once you've got your shaders on make sure that all these settings are the same so i'm doing using off normal map on specular map on render quality this is the most important one sell that to the max shadow quality anywhere between one and two is fine it doesn't really matter hand depth i don't think that's important old hand light doesn't matter old lighting i keep that on i don't think it matters again but what i keep it on on because if I ever want to do a shade a thumbnail that has no shader or looks like it's got no shader, to get rid of the choppy edges, you go to internal shaders, but and it will look like there are no shaders if old lighting's on, because then the render quality still applies. But as you can see, the sun is still there, so now it applies quite nicely to the side of the player. You can sort of take change the time of day as well to match it. So slash time set five thousand to sort of find one that you think looks good. I think it's too strong for me, so I'm going to find one that I like. I think this looks quite nice. I right now this is nine thousand, so I'm going to go. Do slash game mode sp and change my fov all the way to 30 and press f1 now i'm going to get myself a good pose i kind of like being below the shoulders because if it's below the shoulders you get a nice sort of angle on the player sort of readjust the pose and until you find one that looks good so i like that a lot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click f2 all right, after you've clicked f2 what you'll notice is that if you've got the same setting that i've got quickly press f11 and out to fix that if you go to options video settings and other and you'll see that my screenshot size is two times. It go goes up to four times. That basically is just the resolution from like 1080p to 4K or whatever. I have mine to two times, so the screenshot is a bit higher quality. You can have that if you want to. It's not too important. But whenever you take the screenshot, your screen will go super zoomed in. So to un to make it go zoomed out, you just F11 twice. But yeah, usually if there's like a background and grass and all this stuff behind your player, what you might want to do is go back to slash game mode C and click three where your pickaxe is and just right click and then you take another screenshot like that. But I'm not going to because I don't need to. But that's, that's my screenshot setup so now i'm going to close minecraft and open photoshop okay once you're in photoshop what you want to do is you want to click where it says create new click that and now you want to make your width to 1280 and your height 720 and make sure your resolution is 300 the name doesn't matter because you don't really look at the name 
and just click create once you've got that. Now open up your files and you want to go to screenshots and I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to see this screenshot that I just took here. You drag that in. And once you're in Photoshop, you want to go to the polygonal lasso tool and use Alt and Scroll to zoom in and out. And if you zoomed in, you can hold space and drag around to move around. So you want to use Alt and Scroll to zoom into your player a bit about here, just to the point before it goes to this weird grid layout. Make sure you selected the right layer and you want to click from the very sort of edge of the player. Now, generally, I advise staying sort of to the inside when you go point to point because that means that see what you see sort of here, how it fades into the white bit. That will get like a lot of the mixed colors and it just looks quite weird. It also means that if you make a mistake, you're not making a mistake by adding too much. You're making a mistake by deleting too much, which will mean that you're actually not really going to notice anything. Once you've done, you just sort of click the start point. As you see, I've got the whole player selected. It doesn't matter if you make little mistakes. Like this is actually a really clean cut, I think. Um, but sometimes you'll have little mistakes. It's not too important because remember the thumbnail is going to be like this big No one's going to see those tiny little mistakes now on this press ctrl and J And you want to hide your player and as you can see so the players sort of been separated So go back to this layer and now we want to select the bridge We're just going to completely separate this from the sky Select the bridge and basically just trace around the bridge now Now you just go back to the original layer and press ctrl J again Now you can just delete that hold that and as you can see for the most part this bridge should be fine uh, so you might notice sometimes we'll get these little gaps so what you can do is actually select them i'm just going to kind of go like here and sort of very closely trace outside the player make sure it never touches the sort of area the player's in and now you want to go edit fill make sure it's content aware 100 percent normal and okay and that kind of just like fills in this gap it looks a bit buggy without the player but the player covers it up so it's fine now you want to find a sky i have a bunch of skies already you can just sort of take screenshots from skies in texture packs that you like the look of i'm going to try using sort of a simplish sky i like this one a lot uh you might notice it'll be above one of the layers or so just sort of do that and delete it and again if you don't like this one i think this one could have used a different sky so i'm gonna just try dragging different ones until i find what that works I think this one does look quite nice. I'm just going to get rid of this last guy. And now you've got the three sort of core layers of the thumbnail. Uh, so I'm going to go to the styles tab. You won't have these unless you've got some pre-existing layer styles or other methods of making thumbnails. I'm just going to apply this layer style to myself. And I'll show you the settings really quickly. Um, it's an inner glow with 50%, 0, 21, 50 with a softer edge white overlay. Uh, and there's two gradient overlays, one color dot with 50%. It's reverse aligned with layer, negative 19 degrees, that's just black to white. The scale is 100% on that, on both of these, actually. This one has 22% opacity, this one's got the overlay blend mode, another one, white to black, black to white, and it's on reverse, negative 90, and that's this That's this layer style. You can also add this layer style to the bridge, but what I recommend you do is make it, like, not as strong. So sort of just turn down the size, or turn it up, and just sort of mess around with the opacity of all the different effects as you can sort of see just turning it off and on you have a nice little difference save for your player now that you've kind of got the core elements of your thumbnail sorted now you've got your good sky you've got your good player with its styles on you've got a decent bridge or background what i recommend you do is you want to add some text i'm going to make this a very similar thumbnail to one of my last ones uh, because this is another video about me going back to bed wars so i'm going to use the same bed screen you can just google this and you'll probably just find to search up like minecraft bed png i'm going to use this i'm going to scale it up up, that sort of size gonna rotate it to be around there now you can kind of adjust it till you like it i like that a lot so i'm gonna leave that as it is now for the text i have two main fonts that i use i'm gonna try with both i have panton black which i use full caps to type in this is the whole caps lock and just, i'll do like i'm back and what you want to do you want to scale this up a lot uh yeah gonna rasterize the layer just drag this on top of everything right click rasterize type i'm gonna use the box select tool i'm gonna cut out one of the words Control x Control v now the words are separate, so I can edit them separately. I'm going to sort of just scale them down and sort of see if I find something that works for this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag both of these sort of bits of text behind this. Now this is also too high up, so I'm going to sort of edit this a little bit. Um, I don't know, I don't like that font. I might, I'm going to just drag this below the sky in case I decide that it's not, it's actually better. I'm going to try this again with my other font, which is Hey Comic. Again, sort of just regular mode. I'm going to do, I'm back. This one I do all lowercase. I'm going to scale this up again. And I'm going to use the box select tool and rasterize the layer. X, V, Control X, Control V. And I'm going to drag this sort of here. I'm going to drag this there. I'm going to put you so that you can sort of center the text until. Now you're going to add the text layer style. So I have one that I use. It's here. I should go drag the back layer above it as well. Let me test some layers actually. I quite like this one. So I'm going to apply that to both of them really quickly. 
I'm going to sort of move that a bit. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly centered, if it looks a bit better. So here are the settings for this. It's a color overlay, which is white. A drop shadow, which is slightly dark, darker than white. These are the settings. Basically the same thing with more distance and a darker one. And then just an all black one to add that little, what you'd consider a drop shadow to be sort of effect. Now what I'm going to do as well, just because this is basically the second thumbnail for, for this second copy of this thumbnail almost, I'm going to add a little thing in text to sort of as a joke, just like again, because this is sort of my second time returning. Just add the same layer style. I'm just going to put a range that like there. Again, move it how you, however you like. I'm kind of just going to edit this bed as well because I I'm repositioning all the things again. By the way, to resize things, I forgot to tell you, it's Control T. I'm going to put everything sort of in the middle of the whole image. I think that looks a lot better already. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the very top. I'm going to go to Adjustments, Vibrance, Saturation 15, Vibrance 15. I'm going to go back to Adjustments. I'm going to go to Curves. I'm going to drag the darks a little bit down. I'm going to drag the whites a little bit up. This will add some contrast to it. And that is pretty much the thumbnail. Kind of just adjust the saturation and the brightness as well. I feel like maybe 18 would look quite nice for this. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, once you're done with this, what you want to do is you press Control, Shift, and S. And I want to save this as a PNG. So click Save as Type PNG. Uh, if you don't see that, what you can also do is File, Export, ex Quick Export as PNG or Export as PNG. Um, I just do it this way because it's easier. Uh, PNG and change this to I'm just going to name this the way I normally name my, thumb name my thumbnails. Basically, I just sort of do the name of the person it's for, and then I do TN for thumbnail and the number of that thumbnail. You can also name it based on the video title or the... There's a lot of things you can name it off of. And again, any last minute adjustments you want to make, you can always make them. There's nothing stopping you. I I've just realized I might want to move my player to the left. Be a bit, have better composition. And I'm going to move this to fill the gap. I feel like that's a bit nicer, so I'm just going to resave that again, just PNG, in Pega thumbnail 16. Do you want to replace it? Yes, you do want to replace it. You also want to, ideally, you should probably press Control S and save that as the same name, but as a PSD. Um, because saving it as a PSD means that you get to come back and edit all the layers. So if you decide you don't like it or if your client decides they want to change, you don't have to recreate the whole thing from scratch. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, um, and I'll see you in the next video.